Hello and welcome everybody to Advent of Code 2023, Day 4. So, this problem uh, was a nice little bit of a relief after yesterday's one. It was pretty handy, pretty straightforward. Um, I got it done quite quickly. Um, I think my solution for part one lended itself to my solution for part two quite well. Um, it's not a crazy hard problem, so the part two didn't really do anything wild with it. It just kind of made a slight twist on it. Um, but I think if you thought about it the right way and modeled it the right way, it wasn't going to cause you too much trouble. Um, so with that said, let's dive in to our description and then look at some code. So day four, scratch cards. So now, now we're gambling with the elves. <laughs> so uh, our gondola takes us up. Um, we realize that we're going to another different floating island up above the uh, snow island um so we meet an elf when we get off our gondola and he doesn't know exactly what we want to find our water source but he knows who can and he says he will help us uh, if we can help him with something first which is always the way with these elves um so in this case uh he's got a whole bunch of scratch cards and uh, he needs to try and figure out uh what he's won or how much he's won um so Basically, he has a big stack of scratch cards, and that's going to be the input to our puzzle. And our job is to try and figure out what the what he's won or what the yeah what his prize is or whatever. So, this is our input here. We have our list of all of these scratch cards. So the first part here, this list of numbers here, these are the uh, winning numbers for that scratch card. And then separated by the pipe, we have all of these other numbers and these are like our numbers so if we were scratching off the scratch card these are the numbers we revealed as we scratched and if you see a number in both sides that's you've got a winning number so um it says here the first thing so the, it says here the way we started is that we want to go through all of our winning numbers and we want to see how many winning numbers we have over here and based on the amount of winning numbers, there's a point system that sort of is a doubling point system. So if you get one match, you get one point. If you have two matches, you get two points. Three matches, you get four points, so on and so forth. Um, and the idea is then that we basically have to go through this entire list of all of these cards, figure out how many points we've gotten for each card, and then add them all together at the end. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So not a uh, very difficult problem um so let's dive into the code uh, and have a look so this is for me this is one of these problems where i've pretty well immediately as soon as i read it knew exactly how i was going to write it which doesn't always happen sometimes what i'll usually have to do is i'll have to start by like okay let's just parse the input first and then when i start looking at the data something often reveals itself to me as to how i should uh, process uh what algorithm i should use and how i should move forward as i read this it immediately jumped into my head exactly how i should do it so that's what I wrote first. I didn't even think too deeply about it, um, which that's sometimes a good thing. Sometimes it's not such a good thing. In this case, it worked out fine because it's a relatively simple problem. So yeah, let's have a look anyway at the code. So the, right. So first thing we do, and this is kind of a non-essential step, but it did lend itself to my second part. So the first thing I do is I create this data structure, which is just a dictionary hash uh, for all the scores. Um. So I'm going to be storing in this, the key for this is going to be that card ID that we saw um, in the in the list of all the, the cards. And then beside that, I'll score this, these, I'll store these points that we've, uh, that we've accumulated for each card. So the first thing to do as we loop through the file, we're going to be taking, basically splitting up the string. So this is, allows me to get that card ID. And then I'm just initializing the data store with a score and I'll say it's zero at the very start before we started processing anything. So we've got our ID. Now we need to get our numbers separated out. So this is just another just basic string splitting operations. We split it out. We get a list of the winning numbers and a list of our numbers. Then two other just map operations down here with another split to give us the, just the integer values of each of those numbers. So now effectively we've just got two arrays of numbers and we want to try and figure out how many of one is contained in the other. So a simple way to do this in um, in Ruby is you can just subtract the two arrays and see what's left. So what I do at the start is, first thing I do is I need to I count how many winning numbers there are. It said there was five uh, in our example. In all of the example cases all had five. 
But I don't know, is that the case for every scratch card? I actually didn't look through the list. So maybe it is, I'm not sure. But in any case, I just counted it just so I'd make sure if there was if there was one that only had four or two or whatever or more, then I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't mess up on me. So I put in a count here. Um, so this, I think for the sample, this always just returns five. But anyway, um, so we know how many winning numbers there are in total. To figure out how many numbers we... Uh, didn't match. Uh, I've got my array of winning numbers and our my array of our numbers, and I subtract them. So in Ruby, what this will do is it'll have the winning number array. So if that's got like one, two, three in it, and then say our number array has the number three in it. When I subtract those two, I'll be left with an array that just has. Sorry, what did I say? So so I have one, two, three, and our numbers. I have say two in it. So when I subtract those two, I'll be left with an array that just has one and three in it. So you'd be just left with the remainder of the left array of the subtraction. So then if you count that, I've got two numbers. And then if I subtract those, I get the amount of matches that happened. So this gives me the amount of match numbers. So the amount of winning numbers I have. So that's here. And the score we said is it's like this doubling score thing. So it's basically just you can uh, model that with this thing here, which is just like a power of two. So it's not quite, uh, it's not exactly a binary power of two, it's slightly different. So it's the matched numbers minus one to the power of two. Uh, if it's a non-zero, if it's if there's no matches, then it's just zero, and that's the score. So you get zero, or you get two to the power of the matched numbers minus one. You don't have to do it that way. This is just a simple mathematical way of doing it. Um, you could just, you could like loop through and count at each one as you go. It'd be slightly slower. But this um, jumped out to me that it was it was that it's a doubling case. It's a, a kind of jumps out that it's like a power of two thing. So that's how you compute the score there. And yeah, that's it. At the end, then I have my score as hash. I just pull all the values out, sum them all together, and that's the answer. Um, so if we run run that. Uh, so run day four one on the sample, and we get the sample output thirteen. And then for my input, we get, that's the answer. Um, not super fast, not super slow either. Uh, 0.03 of a second. Um, yeah, nothing crazy there. So let's have a look then at what we do for part two. Uh, so go back to our problem. And yeah, so part two. They say that you're, you're about to tell the elves what uh, the score is, and then they realize that uh, on the back of the scorecards, uh, or the back of the scratch cards, there is a, this, how you score it, is how you win is defined on the rules on the back of it, and it's nothing to do with points. <laughs> Instead, there's this uh, strange pattern where you win more scratch cards based on the number of matches you have, but in this contrived example, you the the scorecards you win are the scorecards that are below you in the list of the cards that we have <laughs> so um bear with me <laughs> this gets it's a little bit uh tricky to describe um i'll probably just go through the example actually it's probably the easiest way to do it but basically what happens is so uh it, for each scorecard each scratch card they all have those ids that are incrementing so if I have scorecard one or scratch card, scorecard, Jesus, scratch card one, and I win uh, two cards, or sorry, I match two numbers, I get a duplicate of scratch card two and scratch card three. So I get copies of these scratch cards and they go into like my list. Um, so then if I move on to looking at scratch card two, I now have two copies of scratch card two. So what I do then is I do the same thing both times for both the original and the copy version, and that'll give me more duplicates of lower down scratch cards. And basically I keep going through that loop all the way down to the end of my list of scratch cards. And what we want to find at the end now is what is the total number of all the scratch cards we have. So um, if we go through the example for that, uh, it's actually laid out pretty well. So he says here, scratch card one has four matching numbers. So you win one copy of each of the next cards, which is two, three, four, and five. Um, so you go to 
your original scorecard two, which has two matching numbers. So you win one copy of cards three and four. Your copy of card two also wins one copy of each of cards three and four. So we double that up again. So now by the time we've gotten to uh, our uh, third card, we now have four instances of that third card, which is one original and three copies. That has two matching numbers. So we again, we win more copies of four and five. And so this will just keep going until basically we don't win anymore. Um, there's a few little uh, stipulations in this where he says that uh, you'll never be asked to get a card that runs off the end of our list of our cards. So if you ended up saying, you know, oh, to pick up cards with IDs, blah, blah, further down the way, we, you'll never be asked to do that. So that's not relevant. Um, what else? Yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah, I think that's it. So pretty much once we loop through this, once you get down to the very end, you'll have uh, a, an extra number of cards than you had at the start. So we need to figure out um, how many we have total at the end. So that's our problem. Um, let's have a look at the code. So if you just read that, thinking about it, it sounds like it's like a you've massively increased the complexity of the problem, but you actually really haven't. Um, like the difference in the code here, I think is like five lines for my second solution. But have a look. I'll talk through the differences. It's not a lot. So, uh, so actually, what is the difference? The my first solution is thirty-one lines. Second solution is thirty-four lines. So it's two more lines of code that uh, change my two my two solutions. So, um, main difference in the previous solution in the first solution when I initialized this like uh, score hash. Um, all I did was just threw in a zero. So all we were storing in the hash was just a single integer, which was this score value. So now we're gonna store slightly more information. So we give it a little bit more context. We're now storing the score as well as a count. And so the count is the number of instances of that scorecard that we now have. So we keep the same loop where we process through it, um, each card and we initialize this, have our count as one, set our score to zero. Then in this, uh, logic down here we're going to compute our score in this time they've actually it's been simplified so um, we don't have to do the calculation of the powers of two anymore all we do is just store the amount of matched numbers we got which is um going to be our uh it's going to be that'll dictate how many more cards down the way we go um <clears throat> and that's it so with that data set stored the next thing we need to do is basically compute these counts as we go down. So you could do this all in one loop. I decided to break it into two loops so that it was just a little bit easier to think about. Um, but yeah, this second little loop down here is what does all of this like rolling counting work. So we basically start off looking at each uh, scorecard in our list. So we start at the start and the main part in the middle here is we look at the, the key, which is in this case, it's the the ID for the card. We know how many, uh, what score we have for each one. So effectively what we're doing is, okay, what's the ID of my key? And then what is the IDs going down the way for the number of uh, the, the value of the score we have? So if I'm on ID one and I know it's, I got a score of four, I know I started ID one and then I go down to two, three, four, and five. So that's all this loop does. It just brings us, iterates through that. And for each one, we just access the next score with that ID and we upgrade, we increase the count by one. So what we're doing is we're looking down the way in our hash and we're going moving through each of them and we're just increasing their counts by one. Um, one subtlety here is that we have to do this increasing logic. The We have to do the entire loop, the amount of times that we have instances of the card that we're on. So that's the for the amount of the count that we have already. So for the first card, it's always one because you'll always just have one instance of that first card. And then the first card could win a certain amount of the second card. So then that count value has increased. So now this is represents our original card and our copies. And if you remember when we start this, we have to look at that one and then we have to do it the number of times that we have cards and but with the same logic for each one. So 
that's the only part that's kind of a little bit convoluted to think about but it's basically just a nested loop to do it um so it's not terribly complicated um so yeah basically by the time we've looped through every single scorecard and we've been updating down the way all these scores as we go we'll end up with our data set and our data set will have each entry will have a account and its score and that's it and all we're interested in is the count because the total is we want all of the the number total number of scorecards that we have so in this case i go through my um my score hash it's just a simple map thing just to pull out the counts and then sum them all together and that gives us the answer um now when we run this this is not a uh, uh this is not a fast algorithm by any means so for the the first part of the sample it's pretty it's pretty quick but uh for the input uh it's not very fast so this takes my algorithm takes about was it three nearly four seconds to run there um so it is going through a lot of data the thing with this is that as you go down further and further through your list you're it, it, it's expanding so it's ballooning out in size um and that obviously then is more iteration, so it takes longer and longer. Um, this is quite a classic example where the second approach is fairly naive uh, in terms of, I haven't thought about optimizing it hugely. I just thought this occurred to me as a good way to do this, uh, as in like, you know, a sensible way that would work, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I haven't thought about optimizing this hugely. And this is the exact kind of solution you might arrive at for one of the later problems. And it might just not work at all because uh, they have a tendency to make these computationally intensive if you were to do it in a naive way in the later problems uh, and it would be like a heat death of the universe type thing to actually solve it if you tried to iterate through it normally so you usually have to come up with some clever trick or optimization to get around that um, in this case it didn't really matter because it's not a huge crazy exponential increase um, but it is pretty big you saw the runtime they're increased uh, massively um, for the second part. So I might uh, do a little bit of, I have a little bit of extra time today than I normally would have. So I might go off and see if I can optimize this a little bit. Um, might not, but for now, this is it. This is a solution that works. I've given you a way of thinking about the solution. So um, yeah, I hope this has helped someone. Uh, if you're struggling with that, this this little piece of logic, especially, I hope is is useful to someone because this is the kind of thing that if it, you're trying to struggle your, to get your brain around it, and then you went suddenly you see it and you go, oh, that makes so much sense now. Um, I hope also my description has been clear because <laughs> it wasn't the clearest in my head when I was thinking through it there. So, um, but yeah, so that is everything I think for today. Um, still going at it, still having fun. Uh, today was a lot easier than yesterday, <laughs> so that's nice. Um, it has me nervous for tomorrow now, but uh, anyway, we have to wait and see what each day brings as it comes. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you all tomorrow.